putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Kevin Jackson here. So y'all know what's going on at Fox. Lots of different things happening. By the way, I will be auditioning for Fox and Friends. And they're going to try a few people just to see what's going on there. And I'll be auditioning for them on uh, November the 4th and the 5th. I'll be doing that weekend. And I'm excited about it. I think it could be a lot of fun. So we're going to look at uh, chemistry and, you know, stuff like that. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm I'm very interested in, um, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't want to do, I mean, everybody's like, Kevin, you need a show on Fox, you need a show on Fox, perhaps. But I would rather do a weekend show. And Fox and Friends, you're doing two days. You're doing Saturday and Sunday, and you got to come up and prep on Friday. So it's three days. It's a lot of time out of your, out of your life. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But anyway, speaking of Fox. As you guys know, I'm a Fox News contributor. I have been on many, many shows. And uh, one of the shows that I've been on, I was on early on was the O'Reilly Factor. And they just started calling it The Factor with Bill O'Reilly. But anyway, I was on his show early on. I'm glad I did it. And I'll tell you why. It helped me form my talking points. And they they are so strict on the talk, on the factor that you have to provide links and you know, when they start when they come up with a story, they say, What are your thoughts? And you go, well, I'm thinking about this. And if if they like it, they're like, well, back this up. You said this. You better show me where you got this information. And so I really got good at talking points because I wanted I I, I wanted it backed up. I didn't want to just leave it to chance. So uh, they made me better. And that's a good thing. And I'll tell you, you guys may not like Megan anymore, but Megan, when I was when she was there and I was one of her main guests, she would say things to me. She would tell me she told me point blank, Kevin, I love your talking points. They're always on point. You, you know, you're going the extra mile and that's what I like about what you do. So long story short, I, um, you know, I I appreciated that because you learn from that. It makes you want to be better. So I appreciate O'Reilly for doing that for me and his producers. But, you know, obviously he left, Megan left and the whole complexion of Fox changed. It's, it opens an opportunity for me, but I would love to see O'Reilly back. I mean, I think he had a good show. I, I He wasn't one of my favorite shows, but I, a lot of people like this show. And I already told you why I have an affinity for him, because he made me better. It's like a coach. He might have been a hard butt, but if he made you better and you got into the pros, you got to be, you know, I appreciate that coach. So months after his show gets canceled, the credibility of at least one O'Reilly accuser is now being questioned. And this lady... I saw a picture of her and I, for the life of me, I t- I'm telling you guys this, you'll think I'm lying, but I'm, I'm telling you this is the truth. I saw a picture of this lady and it, it, she's a black chick. And immediately I thought to myself, this is one of these things where the black folks will say, he tried to do something to me. And, uh, and, and it has O'Reilly's like, who is this? Who is this person? I don't even remember her. There are some blacks out there who want to ruin people's careers because they don't, you know, succumb to the political correctness or whatever else. I saw this lady and went, look, I don't know what is Bill Riley's type, but I don't think that's, I don't think it's her. Now, there are people that argue well, sexual predators don't care about looks or whatever else. I'm just telling you, I don't believe it. So if one of them is suspect, Others are probably suspect as well, but neither here nor there. I will say this. Bill O'Reilly has a bit of a reputation for what what they're talking about. I don't know if it's true or not. I I know powerful guys. There are women that to get a spot on a show, they would do anything. I told you, I think I told you guys a story. Uh, One of the guys that's a driver for a lot of the ladies at Fox, he's an older guy. And doesn't have to drive for a living. He literally, I mean, this dude has got a nice car. He, he's a wealthy man. Was a, a financial guy on Wall Street for a lot of years and made a fortune. And he just likes to get out of the house away from his wife. I won't say his name, but funny dude. And he says, Kevin, I pick up these ladies. You know, they, they talk about I'm sleeping with, and it, let's just say it's O'Reilly. And they're happy about it. They're bragging about it until it goes sideways. Then 
they start accusing him of something. He's like, come on, you're in a relationship. You, he had you on the show. You wanted to be on the show. For the record, I did not sleep with Bill O'Reilly to be on his show. But, you know, the, he's, he's laying it out. You, you wanted this. You get it. He's given you an opportunity to move forward. You don't take it. And then you're mad at him because you don't get what you want. And then you claim it's sexual harassment or whatever. So all these cases against Bill were not legit necessarily, at least according to this guy. But I did see this other lady. Her name was Perkita Burgess. And she was quick to jump on the O'Reilly bandwagon and claim that Bill called her hot chocolate. <laughs> and then um, she, I, yeah, look, I got, when I first did karaoke, my, my the karaoke dude, I don't know where I was, but he called me sexual chocolate and my roommate ran a karaoke thing and um, he would introduce me as sexual chocolate. Now, it was a funny take on the Eddie Murphy coming to America movie, but and I didn't have a Jerry curl for those of you who are wondering, but OK, big deal. He called her hot chocolate. She says, I contacted the Fox News for six months a few years ago. Bill, Bill O'Reilly is a piece of blah, blah, blah. And then she says, Bill O'Reilly likes black women. I'll leave it at that. That's a compliment. I hope he does. But his whole thing was he called her, supposedly called her hot chocolate. Burgess worked for Fox News for a few weeks in 2008 as a secretarial temp. She even lied about that, claiming it was for six months. Burgess didn't have any other claim to fame. I'm telling you the facts about this lady. All right. So even she never bothered to make a sexual harassment claim against O'Reilly or Fox News until the New York Times reported that five other women managed to reach seven figure settlements. And then she decided to get in it. it decades old settlements, by the way. See, they were inviting. I, I don't look. I hear people say, well, if you're sexually harassed, you may not tell anybody for decades. It's it's horrible. Rape is horrible. Harassment could be horrible. But I don't know. I, I'm a little skeptical. Just going to put it that way. So anyway, Burgess jumps on the, the, the gravy train, decides to add to the claims. And her allegations, they say, played a significant role in O'Reilly being terminated. And you, I would be, if this were the lady that got me terminated, I would be mad. You just got to see who I'm talking about. Now, day one, Bill O'Reilly denied ever having a conversation with Burgess. In fact, he says he didn't even know who she was. So when it came out, it was stunning. And I said that earlier. I bet you, based on this story, that O'Reilly doesn't even know. He's like, who? Right? But what we learn about Burgess is even more interesting. Detroit police report February 11th of 2015 documents Burgess arrest on charges of making a false report and obstructing a court order. And according to the police document, Burgess called authorities and alleged her boyfriend had struck her in the face with a gun. Police said when they arrived at the scene, Burgess appeared intoxicated. The arresting officer stated, I asked Ms. Burgess where the gun was that she was struck with in the face. She replied, there is no gun. I again asked her where the gun was as if she'd been and if she'd been assaulted. The boyfriend told police she had threatened him, saying she would call the cops, saying you hit me with a gun. I, I, guys, you have no idea. <laughs> People out there are this devious. They are. So Burgess got arrested for following a false felony reporting for violating a personal protection order. Yep. They acknowledge it. Her attorney acknowledged it. Saying that Burgess and her former boyfriend both believed the charges were based on a misunderstanding and were not pursued by the police or prosecutors. In another document, social media used a uh, User thought to be Burgess tweeted on November 24th of 2012. Up to 10 years ago, Lawrence Fishburne could get every ounce of my hot chocolate. <laughs> Addressing the tweet, Bloom stated, Miss Burgess has used many terms to refer to herself, including on occasion the B word and the N word. 
that does not give others, especially her superiors in the workplace, permission to use offensive language about her. Okay. So Burgess is a liar who, and and look, I'm not telling you that exonerates O'Reilly on anything else, but with respect to Burgess, it was a joke. But her testimony, her allegations, I should say, against Bill O'Reilly likely got him fired. And that's not fair. That's pretty sorry. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.